<clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> and not to mention marketing nerds of the world. It's time for another episode of Ham Your. And today, well, I'm not Australian. And today, we're going to talk about being English when you're not English. Is it appropriate for your brand? Should you take on a ridiculous accent? We don't <laughs> fucking know. Let's go. Welcome back, marketing nerds of the world. It is time for another episode of Hamya, and today, Margo and I want to talk about a positively delightful ad we've seen recently, I believe, for a product by a brand called Dr. Squatch. And we really want to dig in today, go back to our roots, get our screen share on, and share with you guys a little bit about what this ad does really, really right and the lessons we can learn from it. And it's basically everything Margo and I have ever wanted to teach you guys. So, uh, Margo! Take it away. Yes. Okay. So I actually heard about this soap from you guys and now it's stalking me online. It makes me really, really happy. But here's the funny thing about soap. Soap is soap. I know that was a really yeah, great line. Bath are open. No, no, no. Okay. Here's my point. Like there's nothing unique about soap that is like male or female, high end or low end. Like when you take off the packaging, Soap is just like chemicals in a smush thing, like it's like a piece of chalk. And then we shape it in certain ways, and then we package it in certain ways. I guess what I'm saying is like, it is the perfect canvas to brand because it naturally isn't anything specific. And so what stood out to me about this is before Soap we show it to you. Soap boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, actually. So, so let me give you some historical context. So Ogilvy, had an opportunity to brand a soap that uh, P&G was having like trouble selling. And what they did is make this soap white and decide that it was for women. And then they decided that the things that they were going to tell you about the soap was how moisturizing it was and how you could use it in the bath and how luxurious it was. Before, it was just soap that like men could use from a hard day of work after the construction job. Like for whatever reason, those things which have no effect on how you clean your body because soap is soap became really important as to what your buying decision was. So the brand that you now know as Dove is completely manufactured. Like the same bar goes into other things. Yeah. Right, but you buy Dove now because you're like, I believe in female empowerment and it's a female <laughs> brand, and it's built this whole thing about it. Okay, so yeah. we know that, and they've done a really good job for the last you know 50 years since of branding soap for women, but no one's really done this for men, and that's what was so cool about Dr. Squatch. I think that's how you say it. I keep saying Sasquatch, I believe it's, I believe it's squash actually. <laughs> Soft tea. No, it's definitely Dr. Squatch. I think what you're getting at, Margo, and one thing I'm, I'm really excited to talk about today and dig into is how to build narrative around a product like that. Uh, that really works. How do you build narrative around something totally ordinary and make it a staple? And it's, I think uh, it's the with ketchup here in the U.S., basically, yes. and Coca-Cola, basically framing it as like the all-American condiment and the all-American drink and building community around it. And it's so much more powerful than the thing itself, because I yeah. think our instinct when we're newer marketers is to be like, hey, here's the thing. Look at this soap. Like, it cleans you, it's fresh, and it does its job, and it's cheap. Like, yeah. But the more advanced you get into the process of branding and understanding marketing, the more you understand that actually if you can land on a narrative, like in the case of Duff, like this soap is luxurious for women and it totally doesn't make your face feel super tight after you wash your face with it at night. And that's just the moisture getting in. So I'm really excited to watch this ad because I have actually not seen it in its entirety. I'm going to be watching along with uh. you guys. So let's jump in, shall we? First of all, can we both agree that this is the <laughs> world's best spokesperson? Like, whoever cast this guy, you win. You just I mean, win. This dude had to take a break from microbrewing his own beers and his <laughs> to have this conversation with us today. <laughs> That's a dude's dude. Right. Listen up. The soap you shower with, it's <laughs> You probably haven't even questioned what bar of soap you lather up with. Let's face it, most guys don't. <laughs> They're still using <laughs> Your mommy bought for her little man. Is that what you want? To smell like mama's little man? <laughs> but now you can upgrade your shower game with Dr. Squatch Natural Soap. I'm talking about natural, <laughs> nourishing, cold press hand cut soap for men. Men who use their hands. Men who build things. 
Men who open the pickle jar on the first try. Men who catch foul balls without spilling their beer. You won't just smell good either. Your skin will be healthier and more nourished. Dare I say, soft. <laughs> oh, men aren't supposed to have soft skin? Yeah, well, men weren't supposed to cry during movies. And then they made the movie Rudy. <laughs> you want to smell like the forest? Boom, pine tar, we've got you. You want to smell like the sea? Boom, nautical sage, we've got you. You want to smell like you just got off a boat in the Caribbean? Boom, bay rum, we've got you. And with six more cents, we've got you covered no matter what kind of man you are. Now you're wondering why have I been doing it wrong for so long? During the First World War, big soap started taking out all the natural ingredients to make production cheaper and faster. And they replaced all the natural stuff with chemicals. Chemicals like sodium lauryl sulfate, paraben, and dioxin. Chemicals linked to depression, liver damage, cancer, and low sperm count. And worst of all, dry skin. Oh. Your poor balls, all dry, empty, and sad. But there's good news. We make our soaps with natural ingredients from the earth. Ingredients like oils, plants, goat's milk, Greek yogurt, oatmeal, shea butter, and citrus. No, turn your shower game up to 11. Still not sure? Here's a couple reviews from real customers. Joseph S. says, this is the perfect bar of soap. It's like it was handcrafted in the Northwest forest by beautiful tiny elves. Oh, tiny elves isn't enough for you? Well, here's another review from Michael A. It makes you feel like you just stepped out of a mountain stream and Squatch was there to hand you the towel. Click the link for Dr. Squatch Natural Soap. Real soap for real men. Or don't. Then continue to be mommy's little helper. <laughs> All right, nice. Yeah. Nice. Did he click it yet? Did he click the link? Click I, the like link? I would have heard about the dry, sad balls. <laughs> hey, what's this guy doing? Click the link, man. Step up your shower game. I wish we could do a hand in between like that. Oh my God. That was fabulous for obvious reasons. Uh, the Mommy's Little Helper, I am even down with the internalized misogyny very briefly, but I think it was, again, a really great case of, uh, we have those traditional copywriter rules, like take a stand, tell people why they should care, all that stuff. But it does it in a really smart way that I think balances the like, masculine piece of things but also making fun of it because right now i think men are at a time where they're self-aware about like the fact that you're being sold shampoo in a separate bottle that's like gorilla scent bleh, via Pine old spice tar. Yeah, and exactly and it's a friggin it's just so like relax it puts together a really interesting narrative for them that both laughs at the traditions of like male grooming while still underlining what the part of it that's valued which yeah is gives like, you permission yeah i know so many dudes that were like i just bought this and i i want to buy it too yeah, i me too. i want to sign up but what what i thought was so great about this is you watch it and first of all you feel like you know him you feel like yeah. you know every character and this is this is why we say like advertising shouldn't feel like an ad if you're the market you know, it feels yeah. like, oh, this is a helpful piece of information. Like, I laughed so hard. I watched all the way to the end. And then I, I realized that they, all of the principles that we talk about here and that we learn when you become, like, a copywriter, yeah. meaningful specifics. To stay open the pickle jar on the first, the first try. Like, <laughs> I wanted to sit in the writer's room. Like, how did you come up with the, that? That's bullet points. Like, when you're looking yeah. at your sales pages, those are the bullet points. Those yeah. are the little things that people really get stuck on. But it's like, that just confirmed to your market, who you're talking to. Yeah. A certain market is going to think those things are hilarious. The yeah. Ruby reference, meaningful, specific. Yeah, and this is also what I teach a lot when I'm working with students, which is when you think about like the pain points, the goals, the self, the self personal identifiers, it's yeah. not enough to be like, are you a man who wants to be a man? Yeah. Like you've got to get specific about what being a man means to this specific demographic. Yeah. And obviously it's targeting millennial, Gen X, Gen Y men. Maybe there are some bloomers thrown in there. We don't know, but largely millennials who have different definitions of what being a masculine, but being a regular guy is. And I yeah. think what this does differently from say the Old Spice commercials, where Ooh, there's yeah. like, you've got that hyper, hyper masculine uh, Terry Crews and that, that other guy uh, who's like, who's like, 
the, the tickets to the best night of your life. The tickets are now diamonds. It was like hyper masculine, yeah. but aimed at women for the men. But I think this is aimed directly at men. And again, men who consider themselves kind of average Joes. But what I really enjoyed about the commercial was that throwing the chemicals on the guy because I know when in like traditional male female roles around like taking care of your skin like for women it's easy to be like all natural products or else I'll break out and it's really gonna suck and I like yeah. this dries my skin out all these perfumes and guys yeah. are taught to be like these crazy women right like damn what are they even thinking they spend so much money on these things and it means nothing. I'm perfect with my Irish spring and I get a little itchy in the winter, but that's just because my skin gets itchy and I don't use lotion. When they were throwing the chemicals on him and, and talking about like how the government or corporations basically like ruin soap. And to a point that's true. Like if you use natural soap, you really notice the difference between like grabbing the store-bought like $2 thing. Um, yeah. But I liked how it demonstrated it without feeling preachy or yeah. without feeling like they were trying to convince you that natural is better for uh, hygiene or grooming reasons. But it was basically like, this stuff sucks. Don't use it, use this. And I really liked how direct that was. And I think it's a perfect note to hit. Well, and more specific, like it said, when you see things for women, there's a few notes. You see always eye wrinkles, yeah. always neck, hands. There's certain places that they emphasize. And then there's, right. And then there's things that they, longevity, timeless, yeah. and effortless, <laughs> youth. Right. And then for the dudes, like he said, lower sperm count. Like, yeah. This is what I mean by there are neutral statements that you can say about soap, about chemicals, about the product across the board. And then yes. you cherry pick which ones yeah. go into your ad depending on who you're targeting. There is no soap ad in the history of soap for women that is ever going to suggest that you're going to have low soap count. But here's, here's the irony in all of it is that women buy most of the soap and conditioner and like grooming products for a household. Yeah. This is relics from my time in CPG. Yeah, yeah. And, and and so commercials. Yeah. Dudes are using anything the women bought. So that information is actually super relevant because if Dub is in the shower, dudes are using Dub because they're using whatever the fuck is in the shower. Yeah. He also, when we were talking about is sacred. Right. Face, neck, hands, mm -hmm. dudes. He just said balls. Like there was no other part of your body. It was just like balls. You're dry, lonely balls. I mean, that's that's a concerning. I'd be concerned if I had. Yeah, but balls. that's why it's so smart. Yeah, exactly. And it goes right for the pain point. What your audience is going to care about most? Like, is it the natural ingredients? Yeah. Not necessarily. Is it the scent? Not necessarily. But think of your balls, gentlemen. Think about them. Are you thinking about them right now? Are they going to be dry? Is your sperm count going to be lower? I don't know. Buy this soap. Like you're convinced all over again. Yeah. You're welcome. You're yeah. Welcome. Exactly. Trying so, to save the sperm. I thought this was so well executed on yeah. all the principles we're talking about. And something I want to drive home to the people watching is, you know, we tell you clear Trump's clever, even though this was really, really funny. Like they did a really nice job of understanding their consumer and reflecting back at them their own language. Yeah. So this was, this was funny because you identify with it. It wasn't yeah. funny because they wrote good jokes. It was funny because it was like, oh, sh it was like, I don't expect to see this from a commercial because you expect yeah. a commercial to lie to you and to like be a little higher end. And instead, like they purposely made it look like a home video that yeah. embodied the values that you embody. With and an average looking, average looking guys, yeah. yeah, not nothing. Well, you know, the well no, not the really testimonial. Yeah, not, the, yeah. not the testimonial guys or the shower guy, but the narrator. <laughs> and I also really appreciated how it was like it was the opening shot is just him looking dead in the camera, like that soap you're using, it's shit. Like, can you imagine if we did like digital online business like that? Like those other YouTube shows and podcasts you're watching, they're shit. Watch him, <laughs> Like that's, that would be madness, but it works for this because you have to grab their attention because men aren't going to want to sit through a soap commercial. I don't even want to sit through commercials and I love personal care and grooming. Yes. They had that split second to grab the attention that they did such a great job. And that's again, another principle of copywriting. You yep. have what, three seconds to captivate someone's attention yep. uh, before they move on. There's, there's actually a word for what they did. I remember from grad school called reactive. The way I like to think about it is when you tell a teenager, like you can't do this, the teenager yeah. just like wants to do it even more so that's how they started the ad like that is such a dude thing like uh, but you tell a woman like 
your, your soap is shit and she won't really care. Um, she'll be like, you're wrong. You all yeah, exactly. four <laughs> hours reading the ingredients. I know my soap, please. Yeah. Please. Absolutely. Don't tell me I don't know Sephora, like, lady, check out lady. Um, the, their reviews have been read, they have been cross-checked, we've been searching <laughs> for on track, track, and track. I will track. tell you why you're wrong. But if you do it to a dude, they're gonna be like, what the fuck is wrong with my soap? <laughs> no one's ever told me this before. But yeah, I, I, I love it. And I think the the sense were uh, masculine also without being like... Yes! Yeah, it was also being like, great white shark biting your leg, fresh, and like that kind of thing that like that Old Spice does so well where it takes it all the way to the other end of the spectrum. Yeah. This soap just got so specific yeah. uh, who with who their target market was, what their sense of humor is. They didn't necessarily have to have those like funny, ha-ha, thigh slapper, extreme, yeah. what the hell is happening, random yeah. jokes. It just had to be like, bro, let me talk to you about like why this sucks. And it gives compelling reasons in the guise of like, of course, of gentle humor, but also of watching somebody just narrate and explain and walk you through the process of why yeah. your soap sucks. And yeah. you're, you're captivated because the person's speaking your language. Yeah. And it's just such an excellent example. And I'm so glad we got to explore it. Today. I know. It's so we want to hear from you guys. What did you think of the ad? What did you take away? How are you going to write ads differently now? The main thing I want to make sure that everyone takes away is that this ad is not trying too hard. I think a lot of times when we go in to write our copy, to write our ads, to write sales pages, we're thinking about like how it's supposed to sound to execute right. And the way it's supposed to sound is like your audience. Like yeah. it needs to sound like them. And that's why this does such an awesome job. Like it is not a soap ad that is competing with other soaps. It is talking directly to the consumer. And that's why it wins. So anyway, I am Margot Aaron. And I am Hillary Weiss. If you like this episode, please like it below, comment, and share it with your friends. We will see you in two weeks. Bye for now, guys. Bye. Wash your balls. <laughs> <laughs>